Whether the state government has any intention to bring a policy to have an equal pay for equal work to the teachers, you know, I have seen here the, from the reply, you know, eight, the government will ensure that teachers' salary con conform to a minimum skill workers' norm. So may I ask whether we have the SSA, the ad hoc, the improved system, whether do you, the government have the policy for equal work, for equal pay for the teachers in the state? Sir, uh, Meghalaya has the, more, the most complex uh, categories of data that we have. So Meghalaya has above 65,000 teachers in the state. So as of now, sir, the matter is being examined. But, but sir, uh, sir, to bring the uh, equal pay structure is very, very uh, challenging for the state financial health. So as of when, sir, if the financial health of the state government is OK, sir, I think we can examine it better. But as of today, it's no, sir who are performing well, who have lots of students, and who are also among the best school in our locality. But they face the problem now, the teachers face the problem, because of the resignation of SSA teachers. I think our honorable minister, he was himself a teacher. He knows this very well, that there are schools who are performing to the best in the locality, and it was known by everybody. I can name the example of school at Mokawat, Nativity School. It was one of the best schools and is suffering now because the teachers, SSA teachers, resigned for the good reason that they get a better privilege and they resigned uh, from the job. And now they are not able to appoint any other teacher in their place. So I want to know from the mind of the government how to address with this problem, how to solve this problem to ensure that the problem of teachers in those schools where four or five teachers is required and they have now only one, two due to resignation, it's addressed. Uh, sir, sir coming, coming back to the same point as we have said earlier, sir, this is a matter of concern for not only the school the, where, of, of, his, of his area, sir. There are certain number of schools, but to be frank, sir, to me, sir, the schools which is performing well, I think, sir, we should take care of that school. Sir, with that particular school, sir, sir, uh, as the government has already decided to rationalize the schools where the low enrollment is. But, sir, having said so, sir, it's a very challenging exercise. So I think, sir, after the constant, const students of the Education Commission, and also uh, the due, with, with due process and exercise, sir, I think, sir, we'd like to see you, sir, I think what the particular that's called, our uh, MLA has mentioned, sir, I think that has, has to be, uh, I will take note, sir, and we will examine whether to, re, to appoint a, a teacher or to bring teacher from other school where there is a low enrollment, sir. Uh, speaker, sir, not only one school, actually, I'm just quoting one name, otherwise I've got the list of schools, performing schools, who are, who are facing the problem of teachers, of no teachers this time. I'll give you the list. I'll give, sir, uh, I'll give the list to the Honorable Minister of all the schools. Sir, the reply be copy paste. Thank you. Dr. Mizan. Wait, wait. Sir, uh, speaker, uh, sir. Uh, Bryce Sarwell, uh, I think he has first raised his hand, so I'll give you. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honorable Minister in Charge Education has replied that as and when the financial position is okay, the problem will be solved. Uh, so I would like to know as to when the financial position is going to be okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, Speaker, so it is beyond uh, imagination. So it's not easy. It's a very, very tough challenge for the state. Because, uh, as, as we know, sir, our state is a very low uh, revenue generated state. So it, it's all purely depend on the financial health of the government, I mean, financial health of the government. So it's, 
it's very difficult to explain when when it will be by department to ensure regular salary for casual teachers engage in government school understand that ad hoc teachers was never started by government of meghalaya it is our private schools run by private uh, managing committees and state government is simply giving them an ad hoc grant sir so this is very important to understand this aspect number 2 sir that uh, it is also we have realized that yes uh, the fact that even though these are privately run and privately owned schools and the government is giving them a grant to help them support their uh, system and the institution but the point is that yes these teachers also deserve to get their salaries on time to be given by the managing committee not by the state government so therefore uh this suggestion has been in fact uh, something that we have been working on it for a long time that's the reason last year we enhanced the ad hoc grants to be given to these private institutes run by private managing committees and uh, we are working also to ensure that these grants that are given to these private institutes are also given on time in the sense every uh, on a regular basis so that they can then further give the salary to their uh, teachers on time but what i need to the distinction which we need to make and the honorable member and the state as a whole and the members of the house need to understand that ad hoc teachers are private managing committee schools run by private institutes not by government government simply gives a grant to them to help them run their school mr speaker sir i'll be asking a very simple question now we know that uh, there is a symptomatic problems and challenges faced by the department but uh, we have to you know deal with the problems sir there are teachers who has already retired and then shifted to some of the teachers they have already shifted to other departments for their better job so the vacuum created by the teachers are not been filled up so the simple question is that those teachers who are already shifted whether they are replaced or can be replaced so any step has been taken so far so that you know the drop out of school children will not be there in the schools because maximum of the ssc school even the government lp schools you can't find the students right now because of the teachers are not present those teachers who are already present whether that can be filled up because this is the simplest way of filling up the vacant the vacant post so i would like to ask the government whether any replacement has been done so far as to you know look into the matter at the earliest because there are teachers uh, there are schools who are not having the teachers even now also. so at least that can be done at the earliest because these are the challenge this is not the challenges because it the teachers is already there so i would like to request the government if those can be fill up at the earliest speak sir so i think the annual member means of a government lp school teacher yes even the ssc teachers also because i'm not telling the education department to radically change everything overnight at least those teachers who are already at, not there right now even the ssc teachers also even the government school teachers also sir speak sir so as of today uh in the last two years uh, in the government lp school in hall of the state there are more than 1002 uh, vacancies are uh, there in the government lp school the recruitment process will will take place operation after completion of all the processes so the government has decided uh, since there is a delay of all this kind for the recruitment of the already emptied pass uh, candidate so government has decided to send a teacher on temporary basis to all the uh, all the government lps specifically know from the minister in charge what is the reason behind non appointment of ssa teachers in case of retirement and resignation because this is a problem that uh, in many schools on the ssa scheme where a teacher retire or resign they have not been replaced or reappointed immediately uh, sir we are coming back to the same point and again after one round again back because sir, there are many ssa where uh, some have been become vacancy due to 
resignation or shifting up from here and there. So, sir, uh, government is doing all exercise, but uh, in view of the personalization, sir, as we said, there are many SSS schools which having very, very low enrollment, and we are doing exercise of personalization, and government will consider uh, all these matters. Sir. Okay, lastly, uh, Celestine, Dr. Celestine, please. But so please don't repeat the uh, already asked questions. Yeah, it's I will not repeat the same thing. My question is, in a situation where a teacher is supposed to go for retirement, say in the month of September, he's due for retirement, then who will take over the school in the month of October and November, and who will take over to take care of the admissions processes for the next academic year? What is the SOP, Standard Operating Procedure for this stop gap arrangement? that the education department is having. Because there are many schools where a teacher retires in the month of November. When it comes January, February for a new admissions, there's no teacher to look after that. So that is how many schools do not have enrollment because there's no teacher to do the enrollment work. So what is the SOP or the stop gap arrangement for that situation? Uh, so Speaker, so this is a except, exceptional cases because most of the school uh, having a double teacher, a triple teacher. So if the headmaster going to be retired, the assistants will always take over. And so, uh, and so in most of the cases, it is it's the fact that there are many teachers working in different different school. So if they understand that that particular teacher is going to be retired in the month of September, in the month of November, so they, the teachers that come on transfer. So, so these are the matters is being examined, sir. And if if that point to be correct, as our honourable member pointed, sir, matter will will examine to do the needful, sir. Thank you.